Good morning. Welcome to this Palm Sunday worship. Amen. And we're Amen. gathering Palm Sunday to worship God in spirit and in truth. him there's power in our praise brother wade if you would now lead us to the throne of grace in prayer heavenly father lord we are thankful and grateful for each and every one that is here that is here to praise you to hear your word lord we thank you for each and every one on this very very special day. Lord, we'd ask that you would watch over each and every one of us. And Lord, we continue to pray for our country at both a local, state, and national level. With the turmoil that we are, are going through from so many different adversaries. Lord, we, we pray for your healing. We pray for your strength. We pray for your wisdom. Lord, we ask that you would be with Pastor Karen this morning as she delivers your word, that each and every one would take something meaningful, special, and personal to them from, from, the, from your word. Lord, we, we are, are, are prayerful and, and thankful for our church and our church family. And Lord, we do believe that there is one way to heaven and that is through your son mm -hmm. and that those that were here that will hear this message will know understand and believe that as we do lord we pray in your son's name amen amen okay from john 12 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had, that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. This morning, we recall that part of worship is bringing into the storehouse of the Lord, according to the blessings that have been poured into our lives, because truly everything that we have comes from the Lord. So those of you who are tithing, um, please bring your tithe now. Those of you who are coming with offerings to share, we can use the Givelify app or we can go to Bethel's website and use our PayPal app 
or those of you who are mailing in your tithes and offerings, please send them to PO Box 149, Lebanon, Ohio. We can still drive by and deposit into the fire, fire fund at the Lebanon Share Facts as well. Just take a moment and we will bless this offering as you give. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Now have our sermonic hymn, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. Our scripture reading this morning had Jesus coming into the city and our sermonic hymn had Jesus coming into my heart, yes. into our hearts. Yes. Today our message is all about Jesus coming in. Some of you know that years ago and multiple times over the years, God has given me a vision of a house with many rooms. It's coming out of that um, biblical teaching that Jesus gave that said that in the Father's house, there are many rooms, there are many mansions. And so God has given me a vision of no more homelessness, no more lack, no more neediness, no more being without. A vision of a house with many rooms. And as I see God moving us toward that vision, I've had the opportunity to watch as God has taken a group of displaced people from a congregation called Bethel AME Church of Lebanon, Ohio, and has moved us from a state of having been dislocated, being nomads, going from the garden store, to the Lebanon Theater Company, to the Presbyterian Church, to the Lutheran Church, to have a place to worship. 
going to a one room storehouse and then bringing us into a place of worship that has a number of rooms. You see, God is moving us toward that understanding of God's provision and God's abundance where our Father's house has many rooms. And some of you are aware that God has recently blessed me to be able to purchase a home, a house that I'll be able to continue to walk into that vision that God has given me of being able to be a part of working in God's kingdom to supply those things that are needed by God's people. And so there are more rooms that have been added to God's kingdom. And since we are in the process, we've called this house that has now become the community's house. We've called this house the Empowering Connections House. It's an Empowering Connections House down on North Cherry Street, just Amen. two houses down from where God has allowed us to purchase land to build a church that will be a place that will serve the community of Pleasant Square. And so since God has provided more rooms in God's house, I've had plenty of opportunities this week to be thinking about what it means to restore a house to its former glory, what it means to take an old house and to clean it up and make it like new again. You see, this old house, you remember the, the, the TV show? Some of you may watch that on public broadcasting. Sometimes I watch that and I'm fascinated by it. This old house, how they'll take an old house and then they'll gradually uh, renovate it and bring it back into the condition that would reflect the values of the people who want to live in that house. And that's what's going on over on North Cherry Street. So today we're receiving a message that will encourage us, a message to remind us that Jesus is the one who restores us. Because you see our bodies, our souls, our very being is the house that Jesus wants to live in. And Jesus wants to restore us to that place where we are representative of the values of the Jesus, of where Jesus wants to live. So our topic today is all about being restored. We might call the title of this message, To Be Restored. You've heard the gospel text today from John 12. A crowd had gathered because they heard that Jesus was coming to town. They took palm fronds, And at the end of our service today, we'll be inviting everyone who gathered their palm fronds this week to, gather, to get a hold of their palm fronds because we're going to do a little bit of reenacting that waving of the palms, as is our tradition here at Bethel Lebanon. But as we heard the text today, we, we heard about the people taking their, their cloaks or their coats and waving them because they were so glad to welcome in the king. They thought that Jesus was coming to immediately restore the kingdom, to instantaneously overthrow the political powers that be. And if you don't mind, I, I will for, for a time remove my mask. And as we are in this Palm Sunday, as we are receiving the word of the Lord this morning, that we are looking back and we're thinking about what the people in that first century um, village of Jerusalem, that, that city, that capital city, that all important city, what they were thinking is that the political regime of that time was going to be overthrown. But as we learned in our church school lesson this morning, and those of you who uh, think that the children's lesson may not be um, quite up to the level at which the adults will learn. I encourage you to go later on today or tomorrow and watch it once it's posted up in our Facebook group and our children's ministry group because you're gonna get a more in-depth instruction related uh, to this text and related to 
Palm Sunday, and it'll do us all good. And I hope that you will go and do that because I think it will really um, be a blessing to your soul. You see, as we heard our readings today, as Sister Carla read, we heard that the people shouted, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And I, I my mind goes back to a few years when uh, one of my granddaughters, uh, Emma, she's, uh, she's in high school now, so uh, she may not remember when she was four years old, but I sure remember that she was in the Easter pageant. And as she came up the aisle there at 111 North Cherry Street in her little um, homemade uh, biblical, uh, biblically replica uh, costume and shaped her palms, I remember her saying the words, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes and the Lord. So as we continue to teach our little children to shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We are also today receiving the word of God. And every single time throughout this message, when you hear the words, Hosanna, I invite you to wave the palms, Hosanna. And if you don't have palms, just go ahead and wave your arms. And if you want to take off your coat or your cloak and wave that, wave that and say Hosanna. But whenever you hear the word Hosanna, Jesus entered Jerusalem for the Passover festival. That was the annual time when the people celebrated the remembrance that the death angel passed over those homes that were marked by the blood. If they had blood on the doorpost, the death angel did not enter and take the firstborn. And every year at the Passover, the people would take um, the time to come together to feast and to celebrate the Passover. So Jesus was coming into the city at the time of Passover. And at, after teaching in the city, after the people shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Then uh, Jesus went on into the city and he continued to teach. But then he went right on in to a home. He went into a house. He went into a place where they would eat the Passover meal together. Jesus not only came to the city, but Jesus entered into the house, the place where the family and the close friends, the disciples who walked most closely with him, the ones that he mentored, especially to prepare them to continue his ministry. They gathered with him to eat the Passover meal when he entered into the house. And if we continue to follow the scripture readings, which I encourage each one of us to do, I know that we all, uh, those of us who have requested them have one of our hymnals at your home. And I encourage you to go into the back of the hymnal and find those lectionary texts that bring us through uh, the Holy Week. And we'll be posting those throughout the week so that you will be able to follow along. And as we read the scripture readings throughout this Holy Week ahead of us, we will find that after entering the city and then entering into the house, where he had gathered with those nearest and dearest. Across the course of the week that followed, Jesus was about to face the greatest trials of his life. And although he prayed, if it be thy will, Father, let this cup pass from me, he accepted the fact of his pending crucifixion. Nevertheless, he prayed, Father, thy will be done. During the week that was ahead of him, Jesus was aware that he would face the work that was necessary to break the chains that held humanity captive. He faced the task of overcoming Satan. He faced the task of overcoming the grave on behalf. He faced the task of overcoming sin and bondage to sin for us. All that he was about to go through was for our benefit, for your benefit, 
for my benefit, for the benefit of every human being across the face of this earth, across all time. He faced his most difficult days and hours with a determination to persevere, to do the will of the Father, whatever the cost, in order to provide the saving, restoring, healing, strengthening power of the Holy Ghost for us to provide his eternal presence within us. And why did he do this? Because Jesus loves us. Jesus wants to restore us. Jesus wants us to be made fully whole. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's read now from Revelation, the third chapter, verses 19 through 21, because we want to go into that text as we continue on with the message that God has sent us for this day and this hour. Revelation chapter three. Let's take a moment to get there. Revelation chapter three. I'll begin reading with the 19th verse and continue through verse 21. Revelations three, 19 through 21. I'm lifting up this word from the new revised standard version. I reprove and discipline those whom I love. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. To the one who conquers, I will give a place with me on my throne, just as I myself conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Yes. Some of you may be like me. Some of you may have seen some versions of the old painting that depicts Jesus at the door of a house knocking. Some of you may not have, that's an old fashioned painting, but you can picture it in your mind. Jesus standing at the door of a house, just knocking at the door. Well, the door that Jesus is knocking on is the door to our consciousness, the door to our heart, the door to our mind, the door to our soul. To be restored, open the door and let Jesus in. Jesus has entered the city. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus has entered the house of worship. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Today, since Jesus is knocking on the doors of our hearts today, here are three reasons why we are wise to open the door and to invite Jesus on inside. First of all, invite Jesus inside because Jesus is the power cleaner. I went out this week with a power washer to try to wash the dirt off the side of the house at um, Cherry Street and the power washer got clogged up with some of the gunk that was in those old plumbing lines. But you see, Jesus is a power cleaner who will not get gunked up by all of the gunk and the sin that may be in our plumbing lines because Jesus is the power washer with the power to push through whatever needs to be pushed through. Jesus sees the dusty junk in our attic. Jesus knows the thoughts of our minds and the meditations of our heart and says, be honest, therefore, and repent. Jesus said those words according to John the Revelator, and Jesus has a clear understanding of all the rusty pipes and all of the old deteriorating cardboard boxes in our cellar and just the power washer necessary to take care of that problem is Jesus to himself. Jesus is able to remove every bit of the grime and the built up soot in every crease and every den and every crevice within us and we just have to open the door and let him in. You see Jesus 
called the religious people out uh, even before he came into that week in Jerusalem as he was going about the last part of his ministry he spoke to them about being like whitewashed tombs Jesus spoke in Matthew 23 saying that too many times religious people uh, you see were putting on a good face and they looked good on the outside while on the inside of their hearts and minds they were full of troubling junk Junk that crowded out the space that Jesus wanted to fill with all the good stuff. You see, Jesus wants to fill us up with every blessing, with every joy, with every bit of peace that passes understanding. And the work of restoration of the human spirit, of healing and strengthening and setting us free from sin require a good cleaning. That's always been the case. Back in the Old Testament, in the Psalms of David, those that old book of worship that we go to and, and are reminded of the humanity's uh, commonality across time, uh, the writers of the song in Psalm 51 and 7 wrote, purge me with high soap and I shall be clean. That plant that they use for soap, they, they ask to be cleaned on the inside. Psalm 51 goes on to say in verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Let's pause during this holy week, this last week of the Lenten season, this last week of having a true focus on repentance and self-discipline. Let's pause and invite Jesus to go every corner, into every closet, under every piece of furniture, and into our life to clean out all of the junk that has accumulated there over time, to remove all the hurts, to remove all of the stains, all the resentments, all of the infection that builds up over time when we have exposure to those things that are toxic. Let Jesus take away resentment and anger and unforgiveness. Let Jesus carefully and tenderly take that Murphy's oil soap to our woodwork and, and do no damage while removing all of the challenges, removing all of the damages that have been enacted upon us by the troubles and trials and hardships that we've been through in this world. Let Jesus's Holy Ghost cleaning power work in us.